Welcome to another Light Blade Learning Lab. Today we're going to cover a couple of topics that crop up regularly as questions. One of them is how do I locate my work so that it's always referenced to the same position? And the second question is all about arrays. There are two types of array in RD Works. One of them is called Array and the other one is called Virtual Array. And there is a big difference between the two of them that many people don't actually understand. So we'll tackle that subject later on after we've touched on how do I locate my work to a reference point. Now, the most important part of that last sentence was reference point. The word reference basically means somewhere that I can rely on that's fixed. So when we start the machine off and we do a reset, the machine goes to its own reference point and it sets a zero, zero in that corner. And if I drive the machine to there and look on the keyboard, it will say zero for X and zero for Y. Now I'm just going to remove my steel solid table to reveal what's underneath, which is a, a fixed slatted table. The one thing about a reference point is it cannot wander around. So if you grab hold of your table and it moves, you can't have a reference point. As the machine moves around and shakes, your table could equally well move in the opposite direction possibly and give you errors. So it's absolutely fundamental that the table is solid. You will have also be supplied with one of these. A honeycomb table. I don't think you could call that a reference, do you? Now, I've attempted to make this into a reference table <clears throat> because what I've done, on each of the corners, I have removed the screws and I've put a small stainless steel angle on each corner, on opposite corners. Now, this gives me the opportunity of dropping the corners over the solid part of the bed, it is possible to move this and trap it underneath these points here. So that's the main reason why I put corners on the honeycomb bed. Now because I never use this as a reference and I rarely use this as a table, as you can see, after nearly two years this table is almost clean because I don't use it. A very personal opinion, this is one of the worst things that was ever put onto a laser machine. If you love this sort of table, then go ahead and use it. But what I would advise you to do is this. Now, we've got the corners on, but of course we've still got movement there. All right, now we can get rid of that movement with a little bit of brutality. We can grab hold of these corners and we can bend them in very slightly here and here. So, with a little bit of judicious bending of those corners, I can make this now into a basically part, solid part of the table underneath so that there's no movement on it. Now, although this corner here is not zero, zero, as you can see, it's probably something like 50, 50. In other words, we've lost 50 millimeters of available workspace. If I use that corner there as a reference, I could decide to locate my work there. Now I can't guarantee that this edge here and this edge here are absolutely true and square to the axis of the machine. In fact I can see when I look down the edge here that this table is very slightly probably out of position. Use some double sided tape on here. Okay, now I've got a piece of scrap acrylic here, which I'm going to peel the um, covering off of. I'm using acrylic because um, it's a, got a nice shiny surface and the double-sided tape that I've put on here will stick well to it. If I set the speed to about uh, 5 or 4 or 3, 3, enter, then I should be able to get those dimensions fairly accurately. 29.9, .9, a little blip. 30 dead. And this one here in X is 30 as well. So 
So I've got my zero in that corner set to 3030. So if I press the origin button now, and I'll set my power, full power, and my speed, a suitable speed, to cut this material. And that will be around about probably eight millimeters a second. And just make sure we've got the focus height set right at about seven. That's not far off. Hold the pulse button down and press the left arrow. Okay. Now remember I set the origin at 3030. It's going to take me ages to send that head back to zero. So if I press reset, what will happen is it will go back at a comfortable speed and it will set back to 3030 in the origin point. There. And there we go. Keyboard says 3030. So now I can do exactly the same thing in the Y axis. Hold the pulse button on. We've now got an absolutely perfectly square reference edge to work to, to put our work in. And the table is not moving. So we can guarantee that position 3030 is always going to be in that corner there. Now, I must remind you that every time you take this table off, it may not go back in the same position. We'll carry on using this table for the moment, as we have already set our reference up. And we'll go and take a look at how we should use this for working with in RD Works. Now, at the moment, um, any job that I put onto this drawing has got the head position shown with a little green square. Now, that head position is defined by coming down here, and we will find that what we've got is something called position, current position. And current position means that wherever you position the head and press the origin button, that is where the head will start. We can come down to here and we can change this current position to absolute coordinate. And that's what I would recommend that you do. Because now what I've done, I've changed this so that when the machine cuts this job, it will cut it from the coordinate of this head position. Now this starts to get a little bit more complicated because at the moment the reference position for this object is relative to the center point there. And let me just explain to you. If we go to config, system setting, we should find that we've got the position for the laser head shown which is the green square and those nine positions for the head should not be confused with this little box up here beside the padlock click on that and you find another nine positions at the moment you'll see that the dot is right in the middle now just for convenience I'm going to do two things first of all I'm going to mark that square and we're going to change its we're going to change its dimensions to 100 by 100 and now I'm going to drive it to position and here we've got X and Y up the top here to position 100, uh, position 50 50 and you see where it's driven to now it's driven to the center point here at 50 50 now if I change this here to that position, if I now check the coordinate position of that square, you'll see that it now says 0, 0. That's because, look, I've set this corner position here, which is the position reference for the object, to 0, 0. So, even if I draw a circle now and I make that circle let's just close the padlock and I make that circle 100 millimeters. If I put handles around that 
I've still got this center position shown but if I tell that square to go to position 0 0 it also jumps up into that corner because it's dragged around by its top right hand corner handle that's where the object is now referenced to so it's important that you understand the use of this little square here because that's how you need to position your work reference to zero zero we're not going to position our work to zero zero we're going to position our circle to actually 30 30. Now that would cut a circle that just touched our reference square. Now the chances are that we don't want that. So just for guidance what I would tend to do is draw a rectangle on here and set this rectangle at position 30 30. So now you know exactly where your reference square is and you can even give it a different colour put it on a separate layer like that and make that a non-cutting layer is output no so now you've got a reference there and that defines the table area that you can work in and where your corner is going to be right so if I now want to cut that circle at a specific position let's just say that relative to that top right hand corner I want to move it in by 10 and 10 then basically I've got to remember that my corner is 30 30 and the top corner of that circle is now going to be 40 and 40 uh, we're going to cut it uh, I don't know what sort of material I'm going to be using probably something like some I might use some plywood okay so we'll use a small piece of plywood and that's probably going to be cutting three millimeter plywood probably cut that at around about 15 or maybe 20 millimeters a second and blowing yes scanning we're going to cut and we're going to have power 70 percent okay so that's my circle i'm going to cut that circle relative to that corner 10 millimeters in from the edge of my material now i'm also going to put a some text in there I could put a picture in there but let's just put text in and we'll make it some sort of fancy text should we let's do something silly like Bauhaus it doesn't really matter 100% uh, width and we'll have characters that maybe let's just see what 10 looks like yeah that's okay first of all I'm going to ungroup all of that lot then I'm going to group that one group then I'm going to group this one group then I'm going to group this one group group the whole lot I'm going to mark the whole lot and I'm going to specify it to be cent centralized vertically and there we go now it's justified now I'll put the whole lot back into a group we'll change it to a blue layer and I can position all of that because it's a group with that as a second object so if I hold my shift key down press that as a second object and then ask it to be centered that way and this way I've now got my text in the middle of my badge let's call it that and we set the blue layer to be a scan layer and we'll run that at say 400 is output yes blowing no processing mode scan power mm, let's try about 30% scanning interval 0.1 that'll do now while we're looking at this little logo I'm going to mark it and put it into a group 
and now I'm going to ask it for an array. Now I'm going to do an array copy here and if we take a look at this little logo here which I'm clicking at the moment you'll see that there's a little black dot in the corner now you need to put the little black dot at the top right hand corner which is where you're going to build your array from because you're going to build it going left and going downwards exactly as it says here and we're going to put three on the top line and we're going to have spacing of five millimeters between each one and we're going to put three downwards and again five spacing between them okay and there we go that was nice and simple wasn't it let's have a look what happens right let's do a simulation we'll run it as fast as we can so it's building from the bottom upwards scanning across whole lines and everything now only when it's finished scanning all of the text will it go and cut the badges out and here we go boom 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 one two etc sometimes that's not very convenient especially if you've got a very complex engraving and you don't want to run the risk of the engraving shifting relative to the outside shape and that can happen quite often for various reasons it would be very convenient if we could do the text cut the shape do the text cut the shape etc so how do we do that I know you say look we've got this feature built into scanning independent output let's try that no that's not working is it it's probably saving us a lot of time but it's still doing all the scanning before it does the cutting well there are many things that you could try for example you could put the text on this one on one layer and then the cutting on another layer this one text on one layer and that one on another layer trust me it won't work it will always do the scanning before it does the cutting that's a golden rule associated with RD works you cannot beat that rule okay now if we look under work we shall also find that we've got one of these funny little symbols down here first of all we must mark the job and when we come over here look we had this little array symbol down here this little positional thing well we've got exactly the same thing here which makes you think that well you know it's the same doing the same thing in a different area but it's not over here it's called a virtual array so you need to click on virtual array and when you've clicked on it you should be able to remove your array direction to the right corner which is the top right hand corner for you and now we can specify in here that we want for instance 3 in X with a spacing of 5 millimeters between them we need 3 in Y with a spacing of 5 between them we have to move to a new box of some sort to get our spacing okay now you notice everything is dotted here it's because it's a virtual array it's not a real array let's go and have a look what's happened when we go and view it this time where have they all gone they're not there now if we click on simulation watch what happens text outside shape that's what's going to happen here then it's going to pitch across to here and do the same thing then across to here and do the same thing so now we have got individual scan cut scan cut scan cut a very useful feature if you have got hundreds of these on a big sheet and you want to start for instance cleaning them or painting them 
you might want to stop the machine and pick four of them out, six of them out, and carry on. You'll obviously need to be careful, but of course you've got your corner reference here. So even if you disturb the job, you can always put the job back. Plus the fact that you're not going to upset the relative outlines of these positions because they're not there. They're not there until you've scanned and cut. Scanned and cut. So even if you move your base material, it's not going to be a big issue. To make this a lot more compact, I'm going to reduce this to a scale of, say, 50%. Bear in mind I've got my padlock closed. Let's see what happens. Very intelligent, isn't it? Everything has changed by 50% just because I've changed one of them. Right, now before we run this job, something I must tell you. Although I've drawn this green square outside here for convenience, when it comes to running it on the machine, the machine won't allow you to run that green square, even though we've specified it as do not cut. The actual dimensions are outside the work area. So we must make sure that this green square is held just inside the work area, like that. You must have this setting here on your machine that's plugged into the PC, and you must have this coordinate down here set as absolute coordinate with your machine connected to the PC. Both of those are essential. So you cannot actually transfer this program as a .rod file to another PC that's connected to the machine. You can save this program as a .rd file, in other words, save to a U file, and all the information stored in this program will be put into your machine, and you'll be able to run this from the machine. But the safest way to run this stuff is to run it on a PC and program it on a PC that's connected to your machine. So there we go, virtual array in action. Scan, cut, scan, cut. This is one way that you can achieve a datum, reference. Right, let's just take this as an example of something that I want to make my reference square from. Now what I've got to do is to make sure that I lower the bed because there's a lip just here and across the back here I need to make sure that my reference square sits below that lip and sits on the edge of the frame around the back here because this part of the machine is actually quite square. Now because we don't have a great deal of support along this edge here, we need to have this fairly thick down here and across the back. So again, we're probably going to lose at least 50 mil, I would think. So that's 4040. If I press my origin button now, you can see how the smoke eddies underneath there. There isn't a great deal of air movement underneath there, is there? And that's a classic example of what's happening inside the honeycomb. You know, there is no escape from the honeycomb. Reset. There we go, 40-40. So I can use that square again and again to set my reference up. And of course I shall still have to use absolute coordinates when I'm drawing in RD Works. But there is one major problem with this approach. And the problem now is, this length here is so long that I'm beginning to generate a potential error with my lens. I can't guarantee that the two, I can't guarantee that the beam is going to pass right down the true centre of the lens. 
because if we watch very carefully, look, there's a little bit of clearance in here and I'm not pushing and pulling that very hard, but I can move that a millimetre, push it that way, pulse, push it that way, pulse, and push it this way, pulse, and pull it that way, pulse. So you can clearly see there that we've got two positions vertically and two positions horizontally that that nozzle could take up because it's so far extended and not very well supported. So all I'm warning about is that's fine if you understand what the limitations are of using this system. Now in a situation like this where maybe you want to engrave on the surface of a block because you've got some height here it's not a problem because we've pulled the nozzle right up and we're still on this piece of metal here. We could go down with the table quite a long way. So this is a very convenient way, for instance, if you're engraving on the surface of a box or something and you want a reference. Now, finally, I'm gonna show you a slightly different approach to the problem, which may suit some people. Um, now, this is using my solid metal table. When I first made this, it sits over the table and snuggles in but it's not absolutely perfect and error free. It's not movement free. So what I had to do was to cut a small slot in here at the end of each side. And then I went in there with my screwdriver and I very carefully bent it up just to increase the overall length because I made it wrong by maybe a millimeter. So now when I put the table in, it sits in there and does not move at all. Now I'm aware that lots of people use these machines for producing trinkets at craft fairs, for Christmas, for birthdays, for all sorts of celebration occasions and they have lots of these already made standard on the shelf. Now here's one that I produced earlier, absolute rubbish but hey, it demonstrates the point, it's not for sale. So no, you can't have one, even if you ask for one. What we do, we manufacture the whole of the unit, the cutting, the hole, the butterfly, the, the logo, but we leave off the red layer, which is the personalization. So we'll go to the red layer, And where it says is output, we say no. Okay, so everything will be cut and engraved on there except the red layer. And now what we're going to do, we're going to come down here and we're going to specify two with a five mil spacing and two with a 5 mil spacing and touch any other box. And there we go. And we've removed the absolute and we put it back to current position so that I can specify this starting point for the head on the material that I have available. And I can also lift it off the deck on my spacers for cutting so that it doesn't actually mark the back so I'll just put my spacers, my standoffs, towards the corners. Because it's acrylic, we want nice uh, white characters. But we don't want white spilled around the outside of the characters and the logos and the letters. So we've left the covering on. Now with a fairly complicated shape like this butterfly, it's a little bit of a pain to take the pieces off afterwards. But if you're doing it beforehand, so you haven't got to do it on the day, all of a sudden it becomes easy. Because you can do this in your spare time. So you want to get as much of this preparation work done as you possibly can.
So there we are, engrave and cut using a virtual array. So what I've now done, I've sellotaped a piece of material onto the table. It could be any material, it doesn't have to be the same material. And what we're going to do now from the same file, we've just suppressed the butterfly layer and the text layer and the only layer that's left is the cut layer. Take this down to five millimeters. Okay, so we can set our origin now at that point there. Press the origin button and under no circumstances touch the origin button again. Now I've suppressed everything except the cut layer. Now if I pull a piece of tape up, backing like that, I should be able to lift that out. And that means I can now drop that one in. So I'm going to put the red layer back on, which is the text layer. Is output for the cut layer? No. I don't want it to cut again. All I want is the red layer. So everything is perfectly lined up. I can move the drawing around in RD Works. It makes no difference because I've got current set and current is always from this corner of the work. So provided I don't move the origin point on the machine here, it will always start at this point. We put the next one in and press run. And then while that's going on, I can be peeling this off. Provided it's not clear, Oops. and provided it's not clear material, I can give it a puff of isopropyl alcohol. And quickly give it a nice shine. Well here we are at the end of another session. I hope some of that will be of use to you. So until the next time, cheerio.